Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to tell you about a new add-on that's arrived that's actually been designed to help with one of my tools. So you may know recently that both myself and Chris have been working on a tool called Hex Scatter. These are a collection of node groups to help you get seamless materials from non-seamless texture sources. A lot of people have done their own variations of this tool in the past, but I'm pretty sure ours is the best, at least for what we want to use it for. We support a full PBR workflow, and the real twist about ours is that we're using a specific type of blending method that recycles height data from the PBR height maps and that height data becomes a guide of how to blend between cells so that'll be either the hexagonal cells to break up the seamless pattern or the triplanar cells which help to project the material around any shape of object. Some of you have been finding really good use cases for the tools and included in that package are a variety of node groups and they ramp up in complexity and node count. But one of the main points of complexity is that the more in-depth versions of these nodes require many different texture references of the same map meaning that you'll need to use an image texture node many times for each texture texture you use. And to help with setting this up, I included a couple of helper scripts in the hex scatter file, and I explained how to use them in the original announcement video. Basically, you just import the textures into your blend file, put their names inside of the script, then run it, and it will auto assign it to whatever node group name you provided. A couple of community members found that they could make this a bit more user friendly. So they've specifically designed a helper add on to help people make materials with our hex scatter tools. So I'll show this here. I'm looking on Blender Market. It's called Hex Scatter Textures Replacer. It's only $5 and I'm not taking any cut from this. They did say I could have the option for an affiliate link if I wanted, but for this time, I'll let all of the earning go to them. So here's the thing. If you're in a more professional workflow and you want to make use of Hex Scatter and you know you want to use it for your materials, for your projects, this is going to help you massively because it's going to really tidy up the process and it's going to let you make the materials outside of the Hex Scatter file easily. And actually to go along with that, inspired by this add-on and the workflow I'm about to show you, I have also updated the Hex Scatter file so that there's a zip file included, which is an asset library. So whereas before it was just a blend file with all the node groups, it's now an asset library as well. So I'm going to show you how this works. Now I'm in a random blend file here, and I've got something in my 3D view, just a regular quad sphere, and I've installed the hex scatter asset library. And we can see that I've already included some categories for the nodes. So we've got color blending, full material blending, which is the PBR. And inside of each of these, we've got biplanar and triplanar and some extra nodes and simpler nodes for the divot tiling. And then we have the preamp versions. If you want to learn about the difference between preamble and non-preamble, then you should definitely watch the original video because I go into it in way more detail. And after installing the add-on, we see up here Hex Scatter Texture Replacer. So this is in the shader editor and this appears in the end menu, as you can see. I'm going to drag in one of the full material blending node groups to make use of the full PBR workflow. Between the BP, meaning bioplanar, and the TP hex plant, meaning triplanar, I'm going to use the triplanar. Before I do that, I just want to quickly make sure that I do actually have a material on the object. Now I'm going to take that triplanar and I'm going to drag it into the node tree. Now we need to be able to change the name of the node group which means that for some reason this is a quirk of Blender we can just delete it even though we just dragged it in press shift a go to group and then respawn it preamble tp hex plant material. When we do that the node group name will be there and we can modify it. Then I'm going to start plugging things in to my principal bsdf shader. Let me make a displacement node plug in the height plug the displacement in this will be too strong by default but that's fine. Down in the material property I'm going to go to the settings, surface, displacement, and set it to displacement and bump. I'm going to turn down the height scale although you may do this in any other way you like, produce the global scale, and then I can increase the random rotation and the random scale. So basically when dragging this node group in, it's going to include the pre-included preset texture that comes with the hex scatter blend file. We have control over how much we want to do the height and color blending as well between the triplanar and the hexagonal cell blending, but that's all stuff you can play with. So to make this into a new material, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all rename this. So I'm going to call it scrape because I'm going to do a more clay scraping material. I'm now going to import the new textures I want to use. So I click on the import texture button, I go to sources, then let me import all of my scrape textures. Now in these drop downs, I'm going to choose the correct textures. So for the color texture, I want scrape one color, AO, scrape one AO, metallic. I don't have a metallic one, so I'll just leave it as it is. It doesn't really matter because I'm not taking the metallic output anyway, but maybe for the future, they could have an option that means nothing. Roughness, scrape one roughness, normal as such, and the height. Now that I've imported them and I've assigned them here in the interface, I'm going to choose the node group and I'm going to choose a scrape. Then if I press the replace textures button, there we go. It's now replaced all the textures in the preamble node group here with the ones I decided in the user interface. So it basically does the same thing 
as the helper script in the actual hex scatter blend file, but this time it's exposed in an interface, which makes it just much easier to understand and use for people that want to make the materials. And now, if you package up this node group, making sure that things are packed into the blend file, and hopefully even if you make this as an asset, you can then recycle this, drag it into other blend files as this complex new material. So if you wanted to make more materials, you would just do the same thing. I would just duplicate that. I would press this button here on the node group to make it unique. I'd name it something new. I would then import a whole bunch of new textures, assign them, make sure that new is selected in the dropdown and then replace the textures. And then we've made a new material. So again, the hex scatter material workflow is relatively complex just because of the number of times material or texture assignments need to be made. But something like this makes it much simpler. So if you are already using hex scatter for your workflow and you just wanted to make it a bit easier, then it's probably worth the $5, you know, just to have a bit of a helper add on. And like I said, they've done it really cleanly as well. If you wanted, you could just make a file like this specifically just for making the materials, which you could then package up into an asset library and reuse in your projects. But remember, you're not allowed to redistribute the actual hex scatter node group, so you won't be able to resell these. But that's just a part of the licensing. Make sure to check up on the studio friendly license we have. So the materials you make using this will just be for your own work. But I feel like if you're watching this, you probably already understand that. And as the creators have specified on the store page, this tool is just a sub tool. So it won't contain any of the hex scatter node groups, meaning that to make use of it, you should already have owned hex scatter and they do also have a video that explains it themselves see so yeah, i really like it i'm actually probably going to use it myself now since this is just cleaner anyway and i was intending to use hex scatter for like future material packs of my own this seems like the perfect method all righty so i guess we will leave it there i know this one probably isn't applicable to everyone but if you're into like shader work and material building then it's definitely worth a try and i thought this was a really cool project as well because these community members approached us asking if they would be allowed to do this and even put it up for a price and we said yeah sure go for it so it'll be nice to try and support other members of the community that maybe don't have their own platform yet. So show some love if you like Hexcatter and if you find it useful for your workflow, it might be worth trying to support these guys as well. If you made it this far through the video, put a statue emoji in the comments and that will show me if you did make it this far. Also, if I don't make any more videos before the end of the year, which is unlikely, but if I don't, then have a great new year, everyone. And I will be back very soon. Ciao.